hi and welcome back to my channel this video is gonna be a long one so get your snacks get your drinks get your coffee whatever it is that you partake in and let's jump right into it so let me just start off this video by saying the pacing in this season is absolutely horrendous it goes way too slow in the beginning and then it conveniently wraps everything up in the final three episodes and it just feels way too fast for me i don't know if it was just me but that's how i felt i am gonna be making two separate videos on the two final seasons because six was such a slog to get through so we're gonna have a lot to talk about in this first part Ugh the slog right so this season we watch the events of an assassination we watch the events of an assassination plot play out from multiple points of view in the first half of the season this means that we start off at different story points for all of the characters but they all eventually overlap in certain areas i would say that eli's episode was my favorite it was very gripping very um how do I say it? It was really um, compelling. I was really interested into Eli's section of the story. Um, I also liked Hux and Abby's, but I just feel like the overall execution of this season wasn't there. Not for me. I don't think it was done well. For me, it's just the way that I like to consume television. I feel like whenever there is one storyline that is being focused on and then we're seeing it from everyone's point of view and then you're getting certain scenes that are repeated multiple times, it is not fun for me. The amount of times that the actual assassination of President Candidate Vargas is shown is only comparable to a flashback scene repeating in an anime adaptation when they're getting a little too close to the manga, if you know what I'm saying. This scene is in every single episode. As if we've somehow forgotten about it happening, it's the only thing that anyone talks about in this season, yet we're treated to that flashback every single episode. Eventually, the main focus does shift from the character-centric episodes about the assassination itself to who actually pulled the trigger, finally landing somewhere on the different people responsible for the entire series of events. Are you following me? Okay. The layers to this giant onion of who's behind the death of Frankie just feels like it's never going to end at first. In every episode, we add another person to the list of people who lended their hand to the grand plot. Whether they wanted to be a part of it or not, a lot of them get blackmailed into submission. It's actually annoying how messy it is because recounting it for this video is not going to be easy. But we start from the beginning. Now, I've got to admit, I don't remember much of what happened in season five. It just feels like there's there's so much going on all the time. But I do know that in the season five finale, Liv rescues Jake from Eli. Something that you'll see in season six is that she didn't, ne she didn't necessarily save him out of the kindness of her heart. She didn't do that. What she really wanted was someone who she knows is capable of all the dark things that she is going to need done as the person who is going to get Melly elected. Now that she has Jake on her team, there's nothing really stopping her from getting control of the Oval. I just find it very frustrating how... Eli always makes something seem like it's a competition with Olivia when he really knows he's just testing her to see if she's capable of doing the thing that she needs to do in order to gain power. He has a gun to Jake's head and he's like, hey, you walk away, I'ma shoot him in the head right here, right next to you. And she just walks away with Jake in hand and she's like, nope, you're gonna be the VP and you're coming with me. Let's go, Jake. He's not gonna shoot his son. So they walk out of there. Jake is announced as Melly's running mate, and he just, you know, you zoom in on Eli Pope, and he's like, that's my girl. And he knows that he did what he needed to do, which was get a B613 agent, a, one of his, into Olivia's good graces. Now, Eventually, you do see that things start to unravel, and we start at point whatever in season six because, like I said, the pacing is really bad, so 
essentially what they do is show the most important event that happens in the beginning and then they try to story their way back to that point so rather than be in present day we get all of the past situations that led to it and then halfway through the season you'll work your way to the present and what happens as a result just thinking about it that way makes my head hurt but we're going to start with cyrus's storyline which is the first one that we explore in the beginning of the season all right so all the flashbacks basically are set up to place doubt in your head as far as who may have been behind this assassination. Starting off the season with Jake already being on um, Melly and Olivia's team, it kind of puts a red herring in that direction and it makes you just assume, oh, maybe it was Olivia ordering Jake to do it and that's how they assassinated him, right? Season six definitely has a funny way of showing the rise of Olivia becoming a villain because in this entire season, it's trying to show you that it could possibly be her, but then it turns it on its head at every single moment and then it kind of deflates the idea of Olivia becoming a villain because you're not sure. You think that it's her, but it's, you know, inevitably not until it is. So... There's a lot of moments that feel contradictory, but you know that it's trying to set up for a future plot. In, like, for example, uh, Olivia breaking up Melly and Marcus. It's part of, let's do something for the greater good, but it's not really that. It's for an ulterior reason. I see. So I'd be helping you break them up the way you broke up me and David. We're making a president happy. We do whatever is necessary, no matter the consequences. So we fall into the rabbit hole that is Cyrus's timeline first. So we have to establish motive. Everyone who gets a flashback episode or a POV episode is someone who is either trying to find who it was that did it or they were part of it. Well, you'd see that prior to election night, he was angry at Vargas because he he assumed that Frankie was going the Fitz route and getting a little too touchy with one of his staffers. Her name is Jennifer Fields and she's a videographer for his campaign. He's under his spell. I tried to separate him from this woman, but no. We're this, we're this close. Here made you realize I am this close to the vice presidency, and this girl is going to cost me what I have earned, what I have bled out for, what I have literally killed for. So his plan here, <laughs> because Cyrus can't see anyone getting between him and his White House, he gets his old boy toy, Tom Larson, in on the plan. He emotionally manipulates Tom using the wiliest of his wiles, so he can get him to um, end this whole staffer situation. Cyrus is somehow able to convince Tom that he should beat the brakes off of this female staffer. And of course, he does do it. I don't know how or when Tom became this like bloodthirsty assassin who is so lovesick for Cyrus he would do anything. Here we are. When Frankie does see her face, after the beating because she goes into the office so she can resign he obviously sees her destroyed he flips because he's like dude i know that you've been concerned i know that you think that i am fucking this staffer but i'm not and you went and got her ass beat get the fuck off of my campaign so this was before election night one little thing that confuses me and we're often gonna have little pieces like this because if you put a microscope a little too close to the script it sets on fire it doesn't make sense i don't know how after all of this happened he was still able to be on the stage in the campaign with frankie as his vice president i don't remember there being a scene of resolution or him saying okay you made a mistake whatever you're still my vp i don't remember that scene but whatever 
I do think that bringing Tom back in this subservient, anything for you, daddy, role was certainly a choice. I don't, I don't see why that was done, but whatever. This whole little plot ultimately ends up just being a red herring because we're all just supposed to agree that this man is arrested and just confesses to a murder that he never did just because he wants to implicate Cyrus and inadvertently ruin his chance at anything because he's hurt? Sure. Sure, guy. Eventually, we do find out that Tom was paid by someone else to say that he did it. So he's admitting to shooting Frankie Vargas? Under direct orders from Cyrus B. The plot is thickening, obviously. It smells of B613 contacts and all signs point to Papa Pope. But why? Have y'all thought about why? While investigating the death of Jennifer Fields, Olivia hears everything from Jake, mostly because it was his assignment from Mr. Eli. I thought y'all said y'all weren't working together anymore. <laughs> oh shit. Oh shit. Here we go again. We do hear everything from Jake, and he explains that he didn't really kill Jennifer. She just had to look dead, so he staged it. We don't know the reason why, though, but I guess we'll, we'll just let that land. We'll let it land somewhere else. Olivia is um, trying to get more information out of what Jake has been doing by snooping on him. She has like her, she has her team watching him and searching through his hotel room to see, well, not his hotel room, I think it was, whatever. Whatever room that they're searching with his shit in it. Tell me you found something. There's nothing in here, it's completely empty. What? The room was cleaned out, it's like he knew we were coming. I'll call you back. <laughs> no, look in the motel. What are you hiding? I should be asking you that. Yeah. That move tried to track me. It was so silly, amateurish. It reeked of desperation. There's nothing there. So he confronts Olivia and he's like, listen, I'm going to need you and your people to fuck off and stop snooping around. He shows her evidence saying that she is the one who paid off Tom Larson to confess about the shooting, you know, and getting Cyrus incriminated and all that. And she's just standing there like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? What do you mean? This has my dad written all over it. I mean, in on one hand, it could, but it could also be somebody else. I, I don't know. Either way, Olivia shows up and she starts yelling at her dad and he's like, I'm gonna need you to shut up. Like, for real, I need you to shut the fuck up. And this is where we find out that he's being watched. Like, her confronting him about that is the most clueless that you'll ever see Mr. Eli Pope in this show. And I don't know, it just didn't hit. Like, I didn't like it. Dad. I personally didn't like it. I do think that you can introduce new villains this late into a game and make it work, you know? It's more so about how you do it. I personally wouldn't make the show's resident big bad quake in his boots like this from the people's first appearance, but listen, that's just me. I feel like that just gives them way too much power to start off with. And it's like, you can literally go anywhere. You can go wherever the fuck you want. And that's what they did with this season. They were able to present like, look, the most powerful person in DC is crying in a corner right now. And they did that. So we all got to be afraid. You know what I mean? Anyway, sorry, I'm going on a lot of tangents in this video because fuck. Ugh. You know, as the audience, we think that this entire time this plot was going to be pinned on Eli. So it, it has to be him, right? It only makes sense. He's the one that is most evil. My problem is if he would have done all of this on his own, I feel like there was a way to make this believable, but instead he's just being controlled by Paeus and Ponytail who have somehow lured him in with an old girlfriend, a new lab to work in, and they conveniently also have a gun to Olivia's head at every second of every day. 
Who the fuck are these people, you know? Who has enough money to hire people who are capable of breaking a man who was formerly command? That's my problem with this storyline. It just, there's a lot of disbelief that needs to be suspended in order for all of this to, to fit together. You feel me? I found the episode with him falling for Sandra again to be one of the few very well written episodes this season. I'm not gonna lie. I did enjoy it a lot. I just couldn't for a second believe that they were able to make this entire convenient entrance for Sandra into his life and that he would not suspect anything from the very beginning. It just took a little too long for him to notice that shit was off. He does finally arrive at that conclusion and he confronts Sandra away from the cameras. She confesses that someone made her arrive in town and start working with him, but that's all that she knew. They provided the lab, they provided the, you know, the information about all the studies that they were going to be conducting. They set all of this up just to get him in there and trapped. I'm sure Eli is just punching the air in his mind at this point because how could he have been so weak? He isn't playing around when it comes to control, so he obviously has a loose end that he needs to tie up. You have a streak of weakness, Eli. We found it. Don't beat yourself up. We're just better than you. <sighs> you people always thinking you're better than us. Where I have difficulty is, I do know that he may have loved her, they had a lot of history, but in Eli's mind she was just a tool used to subdue him in that moment and it could not stand. She could not stand because he shot her right in the face. But it doesn't matter, he did all that for no reason because they still have her, they still have him I meant. <laughs> he is trapped simply by virtue of them having constant surveillance over Olivia and Ponytail over here just wants to call and say, hey, shoot the brakes off that bitch, they'll do it. I think around this part is where I started to um, really disconnect from this plot because post the Eli episodes where you find out that he's obviously being controlled. We get the Abby episode, we get the Huck episode, and then the Huck, the whole Huck storyline gets wrapped up, you know, neatly with a little bow because that girl Meg that he's been seeing was actually working for the payest people. She's the same bitch that um, had Abby change the bullets that were in Frankie's body to match a sniper, you know, sniper's bullets because obviously if you do an autopsy on this man and find that he was shot with a handgun, what do you say? <laughs> it changes things. You would have to be looking for an assassin on foot with a handgun who has this gun and it just, it's a whole thing. It changes their narrative. They want people to think it was some random sniper who took him out. They're, you know, yeah. Yeah. The reason why this area starts to lose me is because I could have seen Meg being a spy from a mile away. There's no reason why you would have him visit Becky, get all this confirmation, and still get outsmarted by her. You know, that moment where he confronts her and he's like, I don't trust you. I don't think that you actually like me. You're not here for me. You are here on behalf of someone else. And she's like, you know, you should just do it. You're a monster. The fact that he let her go after that, <laughs> it just, it's not Huck behavior. I get that we're trying to humanize him in this show. He's no longer B613, but this man still has like years worth of training under his belt. You're really going to tell me that he's going to fall for that? It just doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, Huck gets shot just like Jennifer Fields gets shot but Jennifer Fields dies because she doesn't have the plot armor you know she's no one cares about her so she dies which was the objective of this um operation she needed to cut off that loose end on Payas and Ponytail's team so she had to die of course Huck is suddenly fighting for his life in the trunk of a car that has been driven off a bridge. And then he kills the spy who was behind it. Well, actually, Quinn does that. Now, 
I'm gonna take this tape off, and you're gonna tell me about Huck. Huh? Quinn does that, I'm sorry. All these things just blend into each other. None of it makes sense. It doesn't matter, okay? At the end of the day, the only thing that matters is finding out who fucking did it. This entire time, Olivia is stubbornly believing that it was her dad and just her dad. Like, there's no one else. It's just her dad. And before Huck goes and gets kidnapped or whatever, before he almost dies, he's trying to tell her, like, listen, this man looks scared. He looks like he has his balls in a vice grip somewhere. Someone is holding his balls and he is trapped. This is how he looks. And Olivia's like, no, you're wrong. Show me proof and then I'll believe you. She sees the proof and she doesn't even apologize, bro. We have eyes on her. And when I say eyes, I mean we have an actual human being who within seconds of hearing from me can put a bullet in your daughter's brain. Ma'am, just say it. Just say that you're sorry. Just say it. Sometimes in our lives, we all have pain. Quinn, call it off. Stand down. Off. She just stands there and she's like, I hate when this bitch can't admit that she's wrong. She will never admit that she's wrong. She's She'll just stand there and be like, and just walk away <laughs> in her little strut. But yeah, they find out that it's not Eli. Someone is controlling Eli in order to get all of this done. So once Huck is back, everyone rescues Huck. Yeah, it's great, welcome back. We're so happy you're here, blah, 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 plot armor. You should be dead, whatever. It begins, the investigation begins into who the hell is actually responsible for this. What kills me is that no one is able to figure out that it's Luna until like the last episode. What's the point? What's the point of all that? At this point, just make it be Eli. I would have rather it been Eli at this point. You're gonna tell me that some lady we've seen like three times in this show is suddenly the mastermind behind all this? Sure, I do think that someone like her is power hungry enough to pay pay mind to something that Cyrus Bean said in passing. Sure, I'll bite. I don't think this lady has enough power to have a contact like Maya fucking Pope, right? We spend two whole episodes just f f assuming that it's Maya because I guess we'll assume that everyone thought that Maya was contacted by Paeus and um, Samantha and then, you know, Maya is just supposed to do the assassin work she's there to kill. I can get behind all that. My issue is we spent so much time trying to get to the bottom of it for Olivia to just be like, yeah, let's set her free. As if that hasn't been, you know, something you've done in the past and been bit in the ass before with. Now you're just gonna do it again and assume that, oh, mommy's trying to help me, so she's not gonna do any damn thing. Whatever. We're just, we're just gonna put that aside because I'm just annoyed at trying to analyze it. And no, it's not that I'm like media illiterate. It's not any of that. I think there's too many things happening. There's too many, um, there's too many chefs in the fucking kitchen, man. This all gets conveniently packaged up and put away the B613 plotline that they just stuck in there at the end. Ugh. So you're gonna tell me that Fitz is this dumb? We're literally just gonna act like they don't have a shitty relationship. We're just gonna give them a surrogate relationship right here at the end. Make it seem like Eli actually respects this man. And yeah, he's gonna listen to the man who murdered his child and has assassinated many past presidents. Only and only because he says it's to save Olivia from herself. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that's the reason why he brought this up. I'm pretty sure he wanted Olivia to sniff this out and take it for herself because, you know, they're they're creating a, a crazy person. They have created a crazy person. You know, I feel like this was a wasted plot line. I feel like it would have been really cool to see Fitz lead B613, but instead he gives it up because mama's upset. What was his angle this time? 
Are the two of you working together now? I did what I had to do as president of the United States. We need protection like this now more than ever. You know where this road leads, Fitz. You've seen it firsthand. It's going to be different this time. Why is that? Because I'll be running it. So that's how he did it. <laughs> that was his promise, and you bought it. What I did was take matters into my own hands. He manipulated you. He will work against you at every turn. And when the time is right, he will try to seize control. And how would that be any different from the past eight years? You think someone hasn't been trying to seize control or in one form or another replace me? You just described every single day I've spent in the White House, Olivia. This is my chance to affect real change, make a real difference. You of all people should understand that. I wanted you to stay. What? I was going to ask you to stay. To forget Vermont. I didn't want you to leave. I wanted you to stay here with me. Well, guess what? Now I am. Yes, you are. Now you are going to run at the organization that ruined my father's life and mine. I wanted you to stay, but not like this. I can't watch. <sighs> now that the idea is floating around in Liv's head, of course she's gonna swoop in and take it for herself. It's just, she is so good at emotional manipulation. She's great at it. After years of being around her dad and her mom, she's just really good at it. It's at its finest when she is reprimanding Fitz for making an Olivia ass move. Like she's more mad because this isn't something that she thought of herself. She's just like, wow, damn, I wanna do that. <laughs> Their goodbye in front of America was not romantic. I found it to be so selfish and so controlling of Olivia to run into that shot of him leaving on the lawn. It's so fucking selfish, dude. Like it's his final moment to say goodbye to the office that he's held for so long for him to, you know, have his historic goodbye. But then Olivia is just strutting onto the scene and she's like, I'm America. You're saying goodbye to me. Fuck off, dude. I hate that shit. I hate her fucking character. I hate everything about her. And Maya was fucking right when she said that, you know, there's no way that she can, that she can't win because she is half Eli and half her. They have created a super soldier, okay? You know that she's gonna win and you know that it's gonna get very ugly. The second that she ships off Fitz, because that's what she did, okay? He didn't leave of his own accord. She was like, you're gonna get on that plane and you're gonna get the fuck out of here. She ships off Fitz and she gets on with business. She immediately is back in the business of killing vice presidents by getting rid of Luna Vargas. What's worse after all of this ends is, um, it's not so much the way that she, you know, reveled in being able to end her life, you know? She feels so fucking powerful that she's like, yeah, I can just wipe you off the face of the earth. We can do this the easy way, or we could do this the hard way. The choice was hers and she chose the pills but the worst part of this entire um plot section for me was finding out that we go full circle right at the end cyrus was indeed the seed that was planted into luna's head to start the assassination plot he didn't know that he was gonna be framed apparently but it just feels like so many things have to be ignored in order for this to make any sense like sure cyrus you putting this seed into her head it could work but why would you do all of this when you already were in line to be vice president yeah you ended up getting vice president in melly's campaign eventually but like for me it just what was the point of it all? What was the reason? I had a reason. What was the reason? What was the reason? I don't know. I, I really don't know. I don't understand what this whole season was about. I, yeah. I'm going to be honest. I think season seven is going to bomb. If this is the penultimate season, 
I can't imagine what else. To be fair, I've seen a few episodes of season seven. I already hate Olivia. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Rarely am I this speechless. It's very rare that I'm this speechless. I talk a lot, okay? The reason why I have a YouTube channel is because I talk a lot and I need an outlet. I need a place to talk with other like-minded human beings, but wow, am I speechless at the end of this season. What was the point of bringing Maya back for like two episodes? Like, what was that even for? <laughs> We just divert your attention for every single episode and then when we finally find out it takes one episode to get rid of the person and just package them up and on to the next season like ugh. and Abby bro Abby was treated like shit this whole season for what misjudging a situation and then getting blackmailed into doing shit because her boyfriend was gonna get killed if she didn't I'm just gonna shut up. Our next episode is going to be about my final thoughts on season seven and my final thoughts on Scandal as a show overall. Ugh, this one was hard to write, but I have a feeling that season seven is just gonna be me writing Olivia is a bitch over and over and over and over again. <laughs> but I guess we're gonna have to wait and see, right? We will see. Thank you for watching this convoluted ass video and I hope to see y'all next time. Bye.